A lot of people don't realize that when you don't properly dispose of your trash, it ends up in the ocean and in your beaches. Plastic cutlery, old ropes, lots of straws, tons and tons of bottle caps. Go to your local beach, spend an hour and dig around and you'll be shocked at what you find. Ocean currents transport material, including our trash, all around the planet. To measure them, scientists use what is called a drifter. Lots of things you find at the beach can be used as current drifters, but some shapes will work better than others. Let's perform an experiment to see which ones work best. After a quick paddle around our local beach, we collected some marine debris to use as current drifters. We found a styrofoam buoy, a coconut, a metal bottle filled with water, a mangrove leaf, a tennis ball, a detergent bottle, and some colored pieces of wood. We're conducting the experiment in a tidal inlet, a place known for its strong currents. First, we released everything at once to see if they behave in the same way. Did you notice that not all the drifters traveled at the same speed? Let's calculate how fast each one moves. To do this, we'll use a floating rope and measure how long it takes each drifter to travel a known distance. The average speed can then be calculated as that distance divided by the time. We dropped each drifter 100 feet upstream and recorded how long it took to reach the end of the rope with a stopwatch. Coconuts, 58 seconds. Then we repeated the process. Tennis ball. With each drifter. Styrofoam ball. And noticed that some drifters would float all over the place with the wind. Detergent bottle. Go while others would go almost perfectly straight. Each drifter seemed to behave in a unique way, depending on its shape and size. Out of curiosity, we wondered how a human would compare, so I jumped in and floated away with my life jacket on. 53 seconds. We then divided the distance traveled by the time each took to calculate the current speed. Each shape traveled around one knot, or one nautical mile per hour, but there was still quite a bit of variability between them. For example, the fastest drifter was around 45% faster than the slowest, which kind of gets you thinking about why certain shapes behave differently than others. Ocean scientists have spent a lot of time trying to figure out an optimal drifter design, and after many years of study, they've come up with this. This design has three really cool features. The first is that it's made out of a biodegradable material, so after about five years at sea, it dissolves away. The second is that it sits very low on the water, which reduces the effect of the wind. And the third is that the top and bottom are decoupled, reducing the effect of waves on pushing it in the wrong direction. To learn more about how these drifters were designed, check out the video link in the description below. You can use the same method we've shown you here today to measure the strength of the currents where you live be sure to put your results in the comments below and tell us which drifter design worked best. To learn more, visit reach.usailing.org, USailing's REACH initiative, STEM and environmental education through sailing.